Goalkeeping chooses its victims. They do not choose the job. And when you read the job description, it is easy to understand why there are few applicants. You stand on your own, cut off from the rest of the team, taking abuses from the opposition fans. Your job is to prevent the very reasons supporters come to games. Goals. You voluntarily put yourself in the way of flying balls and no matter what you do, you always get criticized. So why on earth would you want to be one? When we finally sit down to tell you the story of Kenyans who have stood between the poles for the national team, we more likely will narrate their exploits between the poles and go beyond the simple fact and tell you about their exploits beyond the pitch. But today, we are not telling that story. The story we are telling is exclusively about their exploits in the pitch. Matthew Otamax Owino, who found himself in between the poles by accident, just as many other shot stoppers out there, went ahead to become one of the best goalkeepers to ever grace our pitch and adorn our national team jersey. A goalkeeper who was so good, so sophisticated, and so proud that they called him goalkeeper Wastadi, simply put, Goliwa Stadi. No one ever came close to touching his pride, his glory, and his sideshows in between the poles. This is the man who played for AFC Leopards, played for Gormahia, and played for Harambe Stars. He won titles with the two biggest teams in the country. Just like that, a sterling career. In 1974, the family of James Otama Nyaminde was gifted with a baby boy, Otamax. He was born in Nairobi. He proceeded to Eastleigh Airport Primary School and went ahead to Kangaroo School for his secondary school education. Google those who have gone through Kangaroo School and you will know the weight behind the name. I wasn't called to Kangaroo because of my, uh, what is called in a, uh, because I, I was to go to Isini High School. Then, uh, because of my soccer prowess, I got a chance to play for Kangaroo. They lured me through their games, games teacher, Mr. Kamau, and Mr. Kamau, uh, who said, uh, but then I was playing for Nairobi, Nairobi Youth Team. We had this tournament called National uh, Panasonic National Youth Tournament. I was featuring for Nairobi. Then, uh, that was Eastern, but then we had provinces. That was Eastern Province, which covered uh, Akina Kangaru Masi School. And uh, most of the players uh, forming Eastern Province were from Kangaru School. And they saw, okay, for them to boost their, their, their team, they needed someone like me. And the offer came through Kangaru School. So I had to consider it uh, before going to Kangaru because I had a teammate of mine, uh, Maurice Njoroge, who already had gone to Kangaroo through the same initiative. In 1991, while still in high school, Otamax got his first call-up to the national team, Harambe Stars, through Mohamed Keri. His football career began within the Eastleigh community where Mathari Sports Association has her roots. His first tournament comes in 1988 in Kenya Youth Tournament where he emerged as the best goalkeeper. Here, players such as Ken Obiambo, the late John Magwe, Sebastian Mungai, Seba, Abdi Kadis, Maurice Wabuya, Evans Nyambaru, Ezekiel Akwana, Asman Gaiwa, and Alfred Chege, among others, came alive. Madari played against Kenya under 23, the team that played uh, Egypt then, Akina Peter Mololo, yeah, Tony Luanga, that played Francis Oduo. And uh, their coach, Mohamed Harry, and team manager, uh, Patrick Nagy, they saw me in that friendly. And uh, what happened, Nagy was aligned to Kenya Breweries, now Tasca. They wrote me, they wrote me into that team. But again, I was already in the, in the cameras of, is the camera the right word? of Reunion FC, but Reunion being my favorite team, so I chose Reunion over, 
of uh, Kenya breweries. So I had a chance while in Form 1 to play for play in the Super League. I was doing wonders. Uh, by the time I was uh, going to Form 2, I had my first call-up in the national team. That was to feature, to, to tour Libya for an inv invitational uh, tournament. When Otamax left school, he was already a big name, having already been called to the national team. In 1990, Otamax with the Mathare squad traveled to Norway for the Norway Cup tournament. This was just the beginning of his sterling career. If it was sterling at all, he made a quick stop at Undugu Sports FC where he played with the likes of Davis Oyela, Jared Ochieng Achieng, and his elder brother, Martin Otanga. After going through Mavare, his first major cup was Reunion, where Peter Kenneth was the chairman then. Here, he was in the company of fellow goalkeepers Mahmoud Abbas and Charles Bushira, some of the greatest goalkeepers to ever stand between the two poles. His first break in the teams comes when the senior players had gone on a strike. He was then taken from school to go and play against Bata Bullets and AFC Leopards the next day. Among the young players who made their debut on this day in the league included Martin Musisi, former AFC Leopards, and Alfred Kirago, former Tasca. It was not the best of his performances and three goals went past him against Bata Bullets. And the next day, another three goals capped his first weekend in the league total of six goals in one weekend of a game. And for the rest of the season, Otamax never saw the jersey again. Uh, in 1992, still, I had not gotten a chance to play for, for the senior team, but I was in the team, all the call-ups. But I couldn't play or feature that much because of school. So in 1995, when I was through, through with school, that's the time I went for Sekafa in Uganda. That was my main, uh, my first major tournament. Still, I didn't play because uh, we had uh, Washington Mwanji, never made the trip. We had um, Ken Kenyatta as a goalkeeper and uh, John Busolo. I was learning, I was, uh, I was the understudy. So I was the understudy of, of which I learned a lot from uh, John Busolo. By the time he was uh, coming out, I had already gotten that needed experience to go and face the world. So my first, uh, my first uh, real test came in 1996 when uh, I played against uh, Algeria in Nairobi. But before, before I had, uh, I had uh, so many stints with the under-23 because I was in South Africa for a tournament. Again, I played against Nigeria in 1995, the team that went ahead to win uh, the 96 uh, Olympics in Atlanta. I pride myself for holding those superstars to a goalless draw in Lagos. It was a tough match. Actually, that, that's one of my toughest uh, matches. Uh, one of my best because at the end of it, I came out as the man of the match. Otamax was to gain his jersey the following season of 1992. After a great performance during the preseason, they played KTM from Thika and Yanga from Tanzania. Yanga even wanted to sign him at some point. School stopped that move. After four seasons at Reunion between 1991 through 1995, he left and landed at Gormahia. He was up against the late Joseph Assembo. Michael Kisagi and Tobias Mahira, and in the company of Zedekiah Zico Otieno, Daniel Shikanda, Charles Ogutu, Paulo Cheng, and the late Joseph Owino, the late Steve Odiaga, John Oviambo Baresi, Josiah Ougo, under the stewardship of Austin Oduo. They won the league that season. So after that game, it wasn't rosy at Gormaya. There was a lot of squabbles the officials, the players, and uh, luckily the national team was fully engaged that year with World Cup, Cup of Nations, so most of the time I was uh, with the national team um, at Kasarani, camping there, so Gormaya, most, most of the time there was this uh, player sitting, 
which never affected my training sessions because I had mine with, with the national team. So after that, I remember even the fans telling me, you'll get wasted here. If you get a chance of moving, just move. And that's why I stayed. I stayed there for only one season. AFC came calling. And with a good offer, I went. After one season at Gormahia, he left due to club politics and player indiscipline. His next stop was AFC Leopards. This used to be one of the rarest moves a player could ever make during their times. The first person to ever make the switch was the late John Okello Zangi, and Ottomax might have been the second player to do the same. He was at AFC Leopards for three seasons before moving to Sports Club Villa in Uganda. He was in the last squad that won the league for AFC Leopards in 1998, and also the team that won the Eastern Central in 1997, a cup they could not defend after a series of thrashings in Zanzibar. For a man who was walking by the pitch and was summoned to place his slippers to act as goalposts and stick between them to stop the ball and look after his possessions, Otamax had come a long way. And he was now ready to go beyond the borders to ply his trade. In 1999, he landed in Kampala. The reception was not good. The Kenya-Uganda football rivalry was at its peak. The late coach Paul Asule was not ready to recognize Kenyan players and he was not involved in signing the Kenyan players who included James Kaimba. For three months, they never got the field of play in Uganda. Here, Otamax was against former Shabana goalkeeper Ramdani Alengesa. His break came when they were to face their greatest rivals. It was a team that Sports Club Villa lost to. On this day, they were up against Simba FC, a military side. Otamax was named in between the poles. This to him was a trap, so that the fans could lose confidence in him. And for the first time, Villa won the match 1-0 and Otamax had done some amazing saves and the newspapers went berserk over him. Just like that, Otamax had picked a jersey and he owned it from there on. Ramadan Lengesa, he was playing for Shabana. Villa was a very strong team, with, uh, but we were leaking very easy goals. So even the officials, the club management, they were okay. Uh, we can't be having Otamax in the team and he's not playing. And the coach was, we can't change a winning team. But you're saying the winning team, but if you consider goal, it's a goalkeeping uh, a mistake. This is when uh, this coach, no, I decided to stay, to stay at home, not going for training. Then one, one day I was called to play, and I think it was a setup. And I said, no. I can't play without, uh, without, without, without uh, training. So uh, I refused. So, but uh, I started training with the team. I started training with the team until the day we were playing a team that uh, Villa, Villa has been losing to year in, year out. So that day, I was given the chance to play. Again, it was more of a setup, but uh, God being on my side, I stood out. In 1996 in Algeria, he has a reason to remember this match. The game pressure was so high and the Stars played an all-defensive game. Stars had a three-home advantage and they needed to defend the advantage. Within the first 15 minutes, he wanted to let the ball through and breathe. He was tired. The pressure was too much as Algeria kept coming for him. He decided to talk to Captain Sami Omolo, Pamzo, that they needed to keep the ball. This was his first game and it remains his greatest game of all time. He says he thrives under pressure. 
many people would pass a blanket judgment on the man and say his pride and indiscipline overshadowed his career. But he digresses and says that this was the way of getting into the game. He remembers how he intentionally kept his team waiting for him for 10 minutes as he did nothing. Yeah, because even that game, my warm-up, um, my warm-up was uh, I delayed the team when, while in Algiers, so I stayed purposely in my room. Guys were waiting for me for 10 minutes. So when I went to the team bus, I knew someone will shout at me, and it was the coach. Oh, with this uh, Yugoslav, whatever jargon. And I was like, ah, Pia Wekwenda, you know, that time. I was warmed up because there was blood rush all over Fred, but I knew I was going to start. So by the time uh, my trainer was taking me through, actually, my trainer was the coach himself, who was a very good uh, goalie trainer. He conditioned me to, to be one of the best. Another moment where he decided to pull a fast one was on away duty for the Stars in Conakry, Guinea. While everyone else was training for the upcoming game, Otamax, coach Reinhard Fabisch and Sif Muite were playing basketball. The team manager had switched positions. Otamax had been cancelled from the squad. The TM had said to the technical bench that Otamax had claimed to be sick. Just like that, Otamax was benched and coach Fabisch had read some sabotage in Otamax as earlier they had played some basketball with the coach, so he could not understand how he had fallen ill. This was just coming after coach Voyo Gardesavik had been sent packing. Later on, Otamax was to learn that he was the one who was sabotaged. The coach was misinformed. Someone told him that uh, I'd say that I can't play, I wasn't feeling, I'm not feeling okay. And he was how he was playing basketball just the other minute we were with him also there. So this guy uses the word sabotage because uh, Fabish was new in the team. Vojo had just been uh, relieved of his duties. So was, this guy was loyal to Vojo. Vojo was like his dad. So I think he's doing this because the dad is not with the team anymore. You see, and if you should tell someone that this guy is sabotaging you. Okay, I didn't, I didn't dig deep into the matter, so I just thought the coach had his own plans uh, to play on Yusuf in goal. We lost 3-1. I remember I was sent, there was a call from Nairobi. Uh, you know, those days where by, there was only one phone call at the reception and I was told, okay, this, uh, someone is calling, wanted to speak to your coach. So I went to Coach Fabish room and uh, he effed me off, so I was like, what have I done? That's the time uh, I knew something wasn't, until the assistant team manager, Akbar Khan, told me, uh, he asked me actually, how are you feeling? And I said, was I sick? Then, Maya, hapa kuna maneno, TM, Major used to call him, Major aliambia mzungu, ati umesema wezi cheza ni mgonjwa. His words. So you see, uh, I was being cooked in the Dino, that young boy who was sailing on top of the wave, being uh, slashed down. So when we came back from Conakry, I was dropped at the airport because we had a, a stopover at JKA and route to Sudan for Sekafa. So the coach called a new team. My, my name wasn't there. And uh, it was unfortunate for Fred Ambani and Tom Odiambo because uh, we were close. And when we were, we were, before going to Guinea, we were stuck in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. So those were my friends. Uh, so they were also left out of the team. I remember the KFF president. He called me to his office and asked me, tell me what went wrong. I didn't know. Because uh, that's when I realized the coach had 
given a new list of young players. This is where Akina John, Dembo Baresi came in. And the, he, said, he said he wanted young players. And he was told, the coach was told, uh, my name was on top, of the, on, on top of the list of new young players in the team. And he said, who is Itaki? But he's young, who is Itaki? The reason wasn't given. But they said that uh, I am indisciplined. If you ask me, what wrong did I do? I can't even explain. Another highlight of his career was the Stars game against Djibouti, where Stars thrashed Djibouti nine goals to one. The contention here is the one goal that he let through. I guess it should have not been such a highlight in his career as Kenyans have kept talking about it. Maybe it was the way it went though. He tried to go past the strikers. He only did beat one striker, but he could not get past the second striker. Who scored the goal? Two games that are a signature in his career, the Stars game against Algeria and the under-23 game against Nigeria. He says these are the games that built and destroyed him at the same time. His all-time devil scorer, Evans Alemba, the former Mumias player who he feared the most and always punished him, somehow he had managed to get his secret and finally stopped him. The man he could not stop was Elkana Swaka, Utali striker. Every time he saw him, he knew there was a goal in the works. Joe Birgen was another of his fears. This is the story of a man who played for the two biggest clubs in the country, won a league title with each of them. This is the story of a man who played for the national team and left at his peak. Matthew Owino Otamax, the current goalkeeper's trainer, is the man who is in charge of the national team keeper training and one of Kenya's greatest talents. A career that did not live to see its potential, or did it? He who played for the stars for three generations of players, this is a summary of Matthew Owino Otamax's story.